everyone, how are you all doing? It's good to be back, and even better to have you all back. Once again, Teenux on tour. Up the Teenux! So I'm at Aston Ponds, I'm on the Butts Pond, peg 12, very rare I get this far down to be honest. There's some really good fish in here, pipes are around for, you know, for oxygen so I've got to be careful. But it looks like there's some fish about. Let's see how I get on. So this is the last two hours of the match. I've gone down the left margin. I'm going to fish next to the podium leg and I'm going to go on a green swim stim pace with a Guru 12 hook. No messing about. Point 20 bottom. Let them have it. So fish on, there is method in the madness as to why I'm fishing next to the leg. For the first few hours of this match I had lost a lot of fish. I'd baited, fished past the bait by almost a full section. Didn't matter where I went, what I did, it was just foul up city. There's just a huge amount of fish in here. So I decided to go next to the leg, I mean as tight up as possible with pace so the bait doesn't drop down any slopes or anything like that and I fed ground bait bang next to the leg as well and this is going to make them come up the shelf and they're going to have to go all the way up to the side of that leg to get my bait that should stop any fish from going behind it or anything like that should get me much cleaner bites in the mouth and lose a lot less fish and it was my only way to try and get something from this match because at this point I'm getting absolutely hammered. Jake behind me, fish. he's getting a fish a chuck on me at the far bank. Lewis to the left of me, who is also a teen up, he's doing pretty well. He's caught far at the far bank side with some bread. He's also catching in the margins. I'm literally, I feel like packing up, crying, throwing gear in. But, okay, maybe that's a little extreme. But, you know, it was kind of like, this is it, let's go for it. And um, I feel like I got this right. Should I have done it from the start of the match? I don't know. I don't fish this place enough to know if they would be there from the start. But I do feel here, if you're not next to something, you just foul looking absolutely everything. I even had a line where I didn't feed anything. It was literally just a bait on the hook. And again, I was just foul looking everything. I tried to fish shallow, but it's quite a windy day. And also, I like to fish shallow at 13 meters, no, you know, no less. And it was just almost impossible here because it's like 13 meters across. Uh, I don't want to fish to the far bank when I'm fishing shallow because it's already really shallow. I wanted to fish down the middle, and I couldn't really find anywhere where I could do that comfortably and ping out pellets that are going to get where I actually need them to be. So. This seemed to be the only tactic I could get to work on the day. And it's producing me some really good fish. This is not a bad size. There's a lot of little fish in here. There's a lot of big fish in here as well. And I just want those big fish. I am miles behind everybody at this moment. There's just two hours left. And that fish is literally just ripped out the elastic. I struck, you know, out of habit, but I didn't really need to strike. It was already on. At this point, I'm on my 20 elastic. Trying my hardest to get them out as quick as I can and stop them from getting near any of the pipes or snags. Because they know exactly where they all are. They're really crafty here. With regards to the float I'm using, it's a Sean Butler custom paste float that my float maker made for me. And I've just cut down the glass stem a little bit because it's only shallow in this margin. It's a 0.2 paste float as well. So the paste is all I needed to weight it perfectly. 
allows me to get really tight up and just fish really precise if you do want any of these floats we can order them for you provided you order at least 10 they're not our main paste float that we do that would normally be the ratty paste float but these can be made if you want them but they on the day they've been absolutely amazing So you can see that is a real good quality carp. These are exactly what I need if I'm going to start catching everybody up. Like I said, I am so far behind at this point. Sometimes when you're pushed into that corner, it can make you... I don't know, I just, I just felt like I really needed to fish as good, as quick as, you know, as I could to pull this back and at least get some respect. I, I really don't fish here very often. There's some really good, well-known anglers that fish here really regular. So just to get anywhere near them, it was going to be tough. Because I, I really do not fish here. I think I fished this lake three times last year. I enjoyed it every single time. I do really like this one. And there's eight of us on this pond, and there's eight of us on stable in this match. But we've only got a certain stretch of this. Uh, we're, on the, we're on the straight. There's also a big, like, bowl area at the very bottom. They're the better pegs, in my opinion. But there's a club on that so it's us versus stable it can only be one winner um so it's usually this lake would be fancied a lot of the big hitters which is fair to say are drawn the stable pond i mean jake behind me probably fishes it the most regular out of everybody who's on this particular lake so um and, he, and like i said he's he's absolutely bagging up He's fishing really tight up to the island with super short lash and and me. So basically a bolt rig. They're just hooking themselves, they don't even need to strike. Alright, well, all right, calm now. It's not it, to be fair, it was a bit too windy on our side and you can't really see it in this video, but it's not it was really, really windy. It's another reason why I opted to get in the margin as well, so I could really present um, and obviously try and restrict that foul looking action that's happening and look at some of these bikes they're all in the mouth they're perfect so i knew i'd absolutely got it right wish i'd done it earlier no guarantees the fish would have been there earlier but still wish i'd done it earlier So as you can tell this fish is going absolutely ballistic and I'm on a 20 elastic and I know what you're That's thinking funny. well if you went on a softer elastic they wouldn't behave like that you'd be wrong if I went on a softer elastic that fish should be around every single pipe in this pond they're really smart here and they're brilliant at getting wrapped around things so if you are going to fish this lake and you've not fished it before make sure you're on some strong gear because you've got to keep these fish in your peg as often as you can and if you're fishing uh, one in one peg a space and then another peg that fish would have gone into two different anglers pegs then so you need to be smart about it don't be going near any little light elastics because you can just kiss everything goodbye 
So I'm going to put in a ball of ground bait. I've had some good fish from it, but I've noticed that the signs are reducing down. You can see the undercurrents of tails because I'm in such shallow water. I've noticed that started to quieten down. But as soon as I feed, they literally come straight back in. You, you really, that's what they want. As soon as it's starting to run out, they back off. They don't really disappear, they just back off. So as soon as you feed it again, they come straight back in. Look, you've just seen the tails there. Wham, fish on. So all I've got is, that's a red krill ground bait. And I've got some sweet corn in it. And that's it, pretty simple. With ground baits, I am not an expert when it comes to ground baits. I know very little, and I try and keep it that way because I don't want to overthink it. All I know is I want some bait to get on that deck as quick as possible and break down at a slowish rate. I want to keep them there occupied, see my paste, see it as an easy meal, and just take that. And that is all I put it in for. I could have fished micros, I could have fished four mils, but I didn't want them wafting down the slope. When I'm putting in a big tight ball of ground bait, I'm ensuring that is sitting there at least till it's broken down. That's by me time where them fish are going to get onto my pace first. I can keep re adding ground bait, it's really not a problem. And that tight up, they can't get behind the float. So I'm not going to be foul looking them anymore. If you're enjoying the video so far please give it a like I am on my mission to get a 500 like video very close on a lot of them maybe this could be it also if you've not subscribed already please hit the subscribe button it's completely free and I don't want you to miss any of my future videos thank you They're mine, aren't So you could just see the undercurrent and a little bit of tail fin coming out then, but just before that fish took the bait. And look at all the other fish that are trying to get out of the way of it. That is how many fish are knocking about. That's a big reason why I was losing so many fish when I was fishing anywhere bar this place. It is so full of fish. Maybe even too full. It, it's, it just makes you think how to feed, where to put it, like no other venue. I even tried a method feed at the very beginning of the match. Got one straight out on it, thought I'd cracked it, and then they didn't take it again. Blew my mind. But I am going to keep returning to Aston. It is a place I'm determined to, to crack. I've had some really great results here in the past on all the lakes. But it, like I say, it's just one I don't fish very regular. And um, there's lots of there's there's lots of absolutely amazing venues around. Um, spoilt for choice, really, where I live. If only I could fish them all at the same time. But the quality of angler that come here is probably 
the highest around I would say of all the places I've been to the competition here is absolutely huge a lot of these lads fish on major qualifiers and stuff like that there's also some fantastic female anglers that fish here including Alex's daughter she's getting some real good results in the open matches which I love I love to see that as well um, in fact, I would say Aston's probably got the most female anglers I've ever seen at a venue. It really does attract a large amount of people here. You've got the lily pond that's just beyond this, that's got all the specimen fish in it. Some fish up to £30 plus in there, £20 pie, there's catfish in there, sturgeon, awesome. And for the price of a day ticket you could catch a dream fish. So I must admit what Alex is doing here is, is great work, he regularly stocks it, looks after it, he's got loads of oxygen pipes, I've got some matches booked on here in the winter league because it's one of the venues where you can actually fish it even if there's ice because he breaks it up with the water pipes so all year round fishing, tackle shops there, you've got a cafe that does a fantastic breakfast staff are lovely I and mean, you've got one of the best anglers in the country that works in the tackle shop so if it's a place you've not matched fish before I would definitely recommend it each pond fish is completely different and they all have their own little quirks and different methods on which to fish them best I would say here if you really do want to crack it you're gonna have to fish probably a good year or so because it's just so, you know, it's just so many good anglers that you have to beat. Um, I'd love to get a win on every single pond. I've had a few wins on split pond before. I've won a match on bills. I've had a couple of seconds on this one. Um, never. I've had a third place or fourth place on stable. At Lily, I've had a third place when he used to let us match fish that one. Um, but I've never really done anything on Lanta other than a club match. I won it in a club match, but never come anywhere in an open match on there. That is just full of F1s. Can you stay and still, fish, please? They, 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 well, there's some real big ones in there, but again, I need to figure out how they're catching them and how, you know, try and crack it. So if you do want me to get some more videos on here, please leave a comment in there saying which lake you'd like to see a video of and I'll, I'll see if I can get on it for you. Tiny fish. All the time, tiny fish. So you've just heard me there saying tiny fish all the time tiny fish so a lot of the time I do this to make other anglers believe I'm struggling or whatever because a lot of match fishing is a mind game you can get into other anglers heads and put them off the game make them change things or make them not change things so I'm catching really well down the margin the last thing I want is for other anglers to start going down the margin and possibly catching bigger fish so I'm just throwing a message out there you know oh, tiny fish making them not want to go down the margin so that's another tip for match fishing it's not just about what you put on the hook and everything else a lot of it can just be letting out little su subtle white lies that make people either change or not change what they're doing to your advantage the dark arts let's say
got you little bugger. That is a cracking fish to end on. Let's see just how we got on. What's what's really trick to it? Tell me what. Can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you lose a lot, Steve. <laughs> he knows how to do it. To drive me nuts. <laughs> I'm going to have to see Steve fishing in honour to see how you don't follow look him. Yeah. I'm going to have to watch you to see how you don't follow look him. Is that £30.8? £30.8? Yeah, it's just have 32, I bet there's that again in there. It's not more. You might have been. I reckon you've got 70. I don't know. It went in that. Oh, it's solid. 35-2. Yeah, I'm gonna teach my to use pace. They don't, they don't use it. Proper fish here. Oh, no, I've had two pound stockies all day <laughs> on base. We should bring some meat in. Yeah, I kind of thought that. Uh, yeah. £20.12. I called it.
I just need to have more than 14 pound in here. So be close. Oh, this is right close. This is right close. Is the 14 pound? This is close. Found eight. <laughs> Did you get them on meat short as well? Yeah, but uh... you're catching some better fish on short line, weren't you? Oh, that, that was a good one, that one. Yeah. Just to be there, to be gonna see it. 45 seats. Um, 18 to 20 elastic today. 27.40. Bloody hell, that was close. It's me about three pounds. I didn't think it was anywhere near as close as that. So these are the results on butts versus stable. I was on butts. I've had 70 pound. I've managed to get second on my lake. I've just been beaten by three pound. Considering I was so far behind, I'm happy with that. And I managed to beat Lewis who had 64 pound and 10 ounces. Well done to Paul Philborn, who's managed to win it off stable i was only talking to him earlier as well about has he had any wins lately and he's gone and done it and there we are one last little look at the fish some real bangers definitely recommend pace on there thank you once again to all my international fans the netherlands obviously are unhappy about ireland taking the win last time have come back absolutely smashed it big thank you to the ladies again four percent that is great viewership really grateful for that thank you so much if you would like to use any of the floats you've seen in any of my videos go on to facebook like this page i'll approve it we post daily £1.35 per float £1.35 one off delivery grab yourself a bargain i hope you've enjoyed the video i've really enjoyed fishing there and i loved making the video as well if you do want to see me fish here more often, please leave a comment, let me know, and I'll see what I can do for you. But until next time, tight lines and see thee. Hello, your call cannot be taken at the moment, so please leave your message after the tone.